Today I'm going to be checking out this new Golden Mate Orion 1000. It is a 12.8 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Now I was sent this at no cost so I could do the review. Let's get it out of the box, see everything it comes with, then we're going to get it charged up and capacity tested. So this is the battery out of the box. It comes with the battery. It comes with the bolts needed with the terminals here on the battery. It comes with a manual comes with some little end terminal connectors here. It comes with these little caps here that will help you protect these bolts from accidentally shorting or creating a circuit uh, when you accidentally you know, touch something to them. Then it also comes with these little cables here. Very cool cable setup here and very cool battery. It also has an LCD screen on the top. So as you can see here, it's got 81% charge on the battery. I'm gonna get this charged up all the way and we're gonna see how well this does in a load test. All right, so here's what I've got going on. I've got the battery now fully charged. It's saying 13.6, just a second ago it was saying 13.7, but you know, it's at its resting state, but it is fully charged. And I reset this battery monitor that I have here. Yes, I know it's not an expensive battery monitor. I get comments about that all the time, but it does exactly what I need it to do, and I'm fine with it. So this battery monitor is all it's doing is monitoring how much usage is coming from this battery. So there is a shunt that's on this cable behind the battery. So I could wrap it around there. That is going to tell us basically everything that's pulled out of that battery. I have it hooked up to this 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter here. And the reason I have that on there is because I have this hooked up to a 5000 BTU portable air conditioner. Now the only reason I have this on here is to put a load on this and I like using something that's more of a real world load instead of something that's just this constant small load that puts on it. So this air conditioner will probably start the compressor and will actually go beyond this 1500 watts. It usually goes to a couple kilowatts to start the engine, but this has a peak rate of 3000 watts for, you know, a short period of time. And it's got a max running rate of 1500 watts, which is well over what the air conditioner needs. So this setup should be fine. What we're going to be doing is putting that load against this battery and see how many watt hours we can get out of this fully charged battery to make sure that we are getting the amount of power storage that we're purchasing. And I don't know if you can see from the angle of the camera, which you probably can't, but it says 100%. And in this LCD, it also tracks how much wattage is coming out of the battery and how much wattage is going into the battery. So that's coming from the BMS. And that I can basically just compare to this battery monitor to make sure they're pretty close. But that's it. Everything is set up for me to get this test going. So let's do it. I need to turn the inverter on. There's a switch here. So when the inverter first turns on, it runs through a little self-test, which it just did, but it also powered the air conditioner. So the air conditioner kicked on and the air conditioner is running with just its fan right now at about 76 watts. And it's saying 78, 79, 77. So the wattage between these two are very close, which is good because that's good enough. They're very close and it's you know doing its job. Now the inverter also keeps track, there's a little screen over there about what it's using, but that's not really counting what it's pulling from the battery, it's only counting what it's pushing out. Anyways, so what we're going to have here pretty soon is the compressor on that little AC unit is going to kick on, it's going to spike this wattage up pretty high, usually for such a short period of time that I don't even catch it on the battery monitor, but sometimes we can get a glimpse into it and see what it pulled. But the key there is, is once that motor kicks on, this is going to be at least about 500 watts usually, but it will slowly build as pressure builds up inside the air conditioner. And sometimes it has a running uh, wattage of maybe around 800 watts. But that is again, still way lower than this and still way lower than what the battery can handle. But it is a very good real world test on pulling power out of this battery because no one's going to just sit here and say, hey, I want these batteries and all I'm going to pull is a constant 30 watts, right? Very rarely you're going to find something like that. Usually you're going to need to put various loads on the battery. And I think an air conditioner does really good at that because it turns on and off with the compressor, the fans, just it has more of a variable load in my eyes. So we're going to let this run for a little bit. I'm going to keep monitoring this until the compressor kicks on, which is going to happen any moment now. 
So I'm going to give this a little bit and we're going to watch for when that compressor motor kicks on. And there it went. For a very short period of time, you could see it did go up into the one point something kilowatts. It probably went higher than that. It usually does, but that's all I was able to see is, you know, 1.5, whatever it was that it kicked. But again, this inverter is more than powerful enough to handle this air conditioner. And again, the battery is rated way more than it needs to be to run the air conditioner also. So this should be a good test where we can sit here and watch how much power gets pulled out of this battery and how much this fully charged battery holds in it when it's down to basically its cutoff rate. Now the inverter does kick off at, I don't know, 10 and a half volts, something like that. So if it detects voltage in is lower than, I don't remember what it was, 10 and a half or 11 volts, something like that around that area, it will automatically turn off. Now the BMS though also in here is supposed to detect low voltage and turn off to protect the battery. So if this battery monitor turns off when we're doing the test, that's because the BMS turned it off. It's basically turning off the power to the battery. But if this stays on and the inverter turned it off, that was because it reached low voltage and the inverter decided to turn off the power and that the BMS said it still could put out some more power before it would damage the battery. Again, those are just the settings of the battery and the settings of the inverter. So we're gonna see what happens. We're gonna take a break and I'm gonna come back in here when this tells me it's getting pretty low. All right, so I came in here because I see that the settings are now showing it's getting probably pretty close to the bottom of the battery here. It's at 99.6 amp hours, 10.9 volts is what it's reading, 1.23 kilowatt hours. So 1,230 watt hours. And we're gonna see what else we can get out of it. We're gonna see what turns off first, if it's the inverter for low voltage or if it's the battery for low voltage. And there's the beeping. So that's coming from the inverter. The inverter is saying it's detecting low voltage. The inverter thinks it's at 10.4 volts. I mean, it's still running at 64 amps. I mean, it's still got the compressor and everything kicking. So it's still doing a decent load against this, even at this low voltage right now. So the battery is still putting out what it needs to. And that's it. The inverter kicked it off because the voltage got too low. But let me go ahead and turn the inverter off. And that's it. So yeah, I mean, the battery is doing good, rated at capacity. The ratings on a lot of these batteries are also at a lower wattage draw off of this. So I definitely put it at a higher wattage draw than most of these would be considered when they get rated. So yeah, it definitely performed well, definitely lived up to the specs that it said it would live up to. The other cool thing about this battery too is it is Bluetooth enabled. I mean, these are really good specs for this battery. The voltage disconnect in the BMS is around 10.4 volts from what I read. So this didn't really get there. It was pretty close. This turned off before the BMS did but as the load was on it, it was starting to get pretty close to that. So we were right about the point where one of these two were gonna kick it off. So if we had a smaller load on this and we continued to pull more power out of this at a lower ampage, we could probably get quite a bit more out of this battery since it is resting at 11.3. Not a whole lot more, but you know, maybe another five amp hour or something like that. So it definitely lived up to its amp hour rating and its watt hour rating. Also, if you notice the LCD here, I mean, it does have high temperature and low temperature cutoffs. It shows you your input voltage, your output voltage and everything. And that's the LCD that's on top. It also comes with these communication cables. And of course it's got the app, you know, go and load the app on here. It's gonna give you all the information about the battery as it's being used. If you wanna be able to keep an eye on your battery, these are good apps to use. And you can usually go in there and put in more than one battery. So let's say you had eight of these in a battery setup. You could name all eight of these batteries different. You could put them in slots, call them slot one through eight, whatever, and you'd be able to monitor all of them through the app. So very cool setup. I really like the battery. I like what they did here. And when it comes to value, it's priced competitively. So it's a pretty nice battery. Definitely something that I would put on the list if I was building out a big battery array. Well, I hope all of this information was helpful. I am gonna have another video on this battery because 
Part two is going to be disassembling this battery to see what's inside and see how well this thing is put together. People have asked for that, so I'm going to start doing it. So watch for the next video on this battery as I take it apart and we check out everything inside of it. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and keep an eye out for the next video. Thank you all very much for watching. Take care.